Hey guys, welcome to the workshop. Today we have a uh, Mitutoyo 510-105A indicating micrometer. We're going to go ahead and take this apart, clean it, get familiar with this operation, and uh, maybe we could share a couple of hints and tips on its use. Okay guys, we've got the uh, Mitutoyo 510 dash 105A indicating micrometer apart um, and what I've done was uh, I've cleaned it as thoroughly as possible um, you know I'm not a uh, watchmaker by any means I know these little mechanisms are quite delicate uh, it seems like everything works properly uh, as far as the operation of it um, I see Emma from uh, Emma's workshop and she had one like this that she was showing the only difference that I notice is that my uh, indicator or uh, pointer has a limited amount of travel uh, and it seems equal these are the two small mounting holes um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to zoom in here a little bit. Okay. We have two small holes here. These are the mounting holes for the face um, of the micrometer. And it seems that they're pretty equal as far as travel. I've kind of like looked in here and looked inside the guts to try to see if there was any kind of way to adjust it for more travel it seems like Emma's actually her her uh, indicator goes all the way to uh, to a low position versus mine which which only goes you know maybe 20 degrees back and forth uh, I think that's that's livable I can live with that um, I don't know if that's proper operation, but you know, as, as far as I can tell, that works. It's fairly free. Uh, getting to the actual part of the comparator um, where you can set the range. There's on mine. There's there's actually two two kind of thumb dials here, and the outside thumb dial will move one of the red um, indicator arms, and the in inner will also do that. And as you can see, like when, when I got it, it was, wasn't really apparent. Like I didn't get a box and any instructions, but this is just a cap. And I guess that you set that and then you put the cap back on. And that works fine as well. <clears throat> and I, you know, I was able to clean the, clean the glass. There was a lot of, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it like finger schmoo. Probably from use and no one ever really... Um, took the trouble to clean it and, and I kind of took some air and gently blew it out especially before I took it apart but even once I took it apart I, I took air and blew it out because I know the mechanism is, is pretty delicate so uh, that was one of the things I also did now looking at the body of the micrometer um, this this actually when the anvil actually touches the other end or it bottoms that piece is spring loaded so what happens is that's that lever that moves back and forth that's where you get your actuation which moves um, which moves this actually the silver piece on the top here this fits inside and that's there's a that's spring loaded so that goes back and forth and it actuates that um, one thing I didn't know uh, if you if you unscrew this fully there's actually a, a brass or bronze collar that you can uh, tighten and loosen that will adjust your how hard this this uh, actual is how how, uh, how much difficulty that you need to turn this so uh, and you know and, and of course getting back to my cleaning procedure I cleaned all this the best I could um, I used some nye oil sparingly on all the moving parts 
uh, and then I cleaned the excess off. Yeah, this thing has a apparently has a jewel. You can kind of see that it's a, it's a different color, but it looks like a, a, a ruby jewel or something that that it operates on. And uh, and I I blew this out very very delicately so as not to mess anything up. So now that everything is clean and operating or functioning as I think it should, uh, we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. Um, so it's, there's, there's really not much to it at all. And it, it looked to me like as you would there's some play here as you would wiggle this back and forth in the housing. That's how you would set your zero here. I'm not sure if that's right or not. But that's kind of how I I came to that conclusion. Now there is one, there is one uh, screw here, mounting screw. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has a... Uh, it has like a, a, a spring-loaded pin, and I, I think this might be like a bottoming. It doesn't allow that that dial to go any deeper. If someone has these, or one of these, and knows if in fact that's supposed to travel further than mine, please let me know. Um, I'm going to use it as is, but you know, it would be nice to have it to operate properly. Uh, I could be appreciative of that. And that's another thing, like where this actually is supposed to end up as far as where the screw is. I know once it's in there, of course this is going to be a procedure to get this in. Um, I am not going to make you guys suffer through this. I'm going to reassemble at least the screws in here and then we'll get to adjusting it to zero. And I'll, I'm going to bring you back and show you that. Okay, guys. Um, I got the three main screws in and I left them loose um, just so this is how I'm really adjusting my zero on this pointer is by taking this screwdriver and just nudging the, the actual uh, mechanism back and forth. I have my, uh, my dial set to zero and zero so I don't know if that's the proper way to do it, but that's the way I'm doing it. So once I get it set exactly at zero here, I'm going to tighten down those three screws. Uh, by far the smallest screws are the screws that hold this on, the face plate. And uh, I'm just going to carefully put this back in position, being ever so careful not to touch the dial uh, these little things terrify me I've never been good at very small I guess I'm kind of klutzy when it comes to this stuff so just the fact that I've I've gotten it put back together this far I don't believe I would ever be steady enough to be a watchmaker Um, thank God the screwdriver is magnetic, but still, it's kind of not helping me that well, or that much. I'm sure there's tricks to the trade. I don't know them. So, bear with me here. Yeah, this is just not working out well for me. I'll definitely be happy to stick to the bigger stuff. Screwdriver's too large. I'm going to 
I'll give it one more shot. If I don't get it, I'm going to turn the camera off and then just do it off camera. I can get it where it needs to go, but then I can't get it straight enough to start threading in. Yep. Well, I guess I spoke too soon on that one. Okay. We're just going to get it uh, not snug, but just in there. Let's try for the other one. I mean, those things are just too small. Look, I mean, to me, it looks like a piece of dirt. And uh, I have Optivisors on, believe it or not. Let me finish this off camera. Okay, guys. Uh, we got the face back on. And uh, thank God for my LED Optivisors. Amazon. I think they're like 25 bucks. They come with a bunch of different uh, magnifying uh, lenses that you can interchange, which was kind of cool. So that was nice. Now getting back to the uh, actual meter, so how do I want to adjust this for zero? Because I'm just going to kind of move the mechanism a little bit. Once I get the mechanism in to zero here, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the screws. Now, let me say again, I'm not sure if that's the proper way to do it. Um, But for me, that worked. Now I'm not really uh, torquing these down, uh, you know, very, very, very strongly, because now that I have it, uh, I just want to go ahead and get it back to zero here by nudging the mechanism around a little bit. And once I get that lined up properly, then I'm going to tighten them one last time and it's a, it's a it's a pretty delicate operation so you can see it just I'm either going one way or the other and of course once I tighten the screw it moves a little bit too as you can see Just about at zero now and let's see if it moves when I tighten it see it moved a little bit interesting so we're just gonna fuss with this until we get it right and you know I'm gonna just like that I moved it and of course it's it was completely out of whack. Okay, that looks like uh, that looks like it's about where we're where we're going to be able to get it. It's just about just about on the money. Uh, and then we'll we'll check to see if it repeats. And we might have to readjust it again. Okay, so now we uh, move the barrel. Gonna bring it back to zero. Just line it up in my eyesight there. So it repeated. And then if we go past, so that's pretty good. So we're lined up zero here, we're lined up zero here. I think that's a win. Uh, now, let me go ahead and uh, get some gauge blocks and we'll test it a little bit and see what happens and we'll put this uh, this front face on 
and we'll be done. Alright guys, so we have our, uh, our micrometer back together. And um, so what is this micrometer really used for? If you're making a bunch of parts and you need them to be within a certain spec, um, it's kind of like a go no go gauge. So uh, you would actually dial in the, the uh, part with your uh, barrel and then you would set what your spec would be by moving these two uh, levers here. So you can kind of move either one of them. So uh, this is good to a thousandths, this, um, this actual dial. So if you if you're allowed plus or minus five thousandths, you would go ahead and set this uh, both of these dials to five thousandths. Uh, or if you were allowed four thousandths, you know you'd move each one. If you if you have a well plus or minus five thousandths, that's the absolute of ten thousandths. So uh, you're you're allowed ten thousandths. That would be that's the way this would be set right now, plus or minus five. If you're allowed twenty thousandths, you'd move this one out to, to ten, and then you'd move this outer dial out to ten. It's actually kind of hard to move. I don't know if I've tightened this too much. That's that's a possibility. I could over tighten these. Well, in any, in any case, you get the idea. So, uh, so let's just take a, one of our gauge blocks here. This is a uh, half a half an inch gauge block. <clears throat> or actually, it's uh, yeah, half an inch. So let's get the barrel out to 500. So we're set to 500. You can see this is uh, that's in the minus area. So you press your your finger that retracts this. You put your part in, and you let it go, and you see what it comes up to be. So there you go, and and then it's repeatable. So if you have a hundred of these, you want to test them. You just press it in. You take the part out. You let go until you have all your parts tested and if one fails well you throw that in the reject pile and so on but that is the basic operation of this now you know how it works um, thinking about it now with the limited travel I have I can only test uh, plus or minus I'm more travel on the plus than on the minus, but you get the idea. I would I would expect that all the parts we make are all uh, equal to perfect anyway, so it, it wouldn't really matter. But uh, it will be a good addition to the uh, to the toolbox. It's a nice older unit. Um, I'm happy to have it. A friend of mine just went ahead and gave it to me. My friend Tommy said, "Here, take it." So. Now we have a uh, Mitutoyo 510-105A indicating micrometer in the toolbox. Hope that helped you guys a little bit. If you have anything to add, please feel free to welcome to welcome yourself to put it, post any anything in the comments and let, let me know what your thoughts are on it. Okay guys, have a great day.